Hello and welcome to the Elegance Factor Master Your Money Mindset. I'm Janine Howard and I'm here with you for the next five days to help you master that money mindset of yours just like I have and am continually learning how to do. Money, interesting word. For many of us it's been loaded with all sorts of beliefs and Thoughts often not in the good way and we want more of it sometimes we can't get enough sometimes we have more than enough sometimes we don't have enough and that's the thing about money you know today's society uh, to get ahead money is one of the currencies that we need to to live in the world that we've created for ourselves you know society has created that too so that's why it's really important that we do master our money mindset. It's really important that we become the person who allows money to come into our world so that we can be the fullest version of ourselves and live the fullest version of our lives. You know, money for me um, has been something that in the past, look, I've often had enough all of the time, had enough. Uh, there have been times when I've had more than enough, which is absolutely fabulous, and I haven't had to worry about paying the bills. I can do whatever I like and have the freedom of choice, which is fun and fabulous. There have been times through my life and career that there is simply not been enough money. Um, I do remember a time many years ago, um, I was living in Queensland, and uh, my husband was, well, both my husband and I were employed in the tourism industry. And uh, Ansa Airlines crashed, tourism in that area crashed, and he lost his job. Uh, I had a fairly stable income, which was fantastic, uh, but his income went from, well, really not much to nothing at all. You know, and in those times, you know, it can be really quite devastational because the emphasis that we place on money and its importance in our lives can often equate to our self-value. So you can imagine for him at that time to, to go from having a job to not having one and no form of income would have been quite devastational. But you know what we got through. There's been other times when you know I've sold businesses and uh, he's sold businesses and we've had more than enough money. And you know for us that was uh, three years ago when we decided to move from Queensland to Melbourne and you know we really had enough money to allow us to be completely free of any worry. So we could make any decision and choice that we desired. So when that happened, we made a choice to become the, the biggest versions of ourselves. My husband decided that he would love to do acting as a full-time gig, uh, which, you know, those of you in the, the acting industry probably know that you might want to do that. It's not necessarily that you know you've got movies lined up back to back, paying in the millions of dollars. It's a it's a tough gig, but you know what? We had the the money to back us for him to take that choice and to make that risk. Uh, for me, then I was able to go. Well, what do I want to do? You know, if I had all the time and money in the world, which I had, uh, I had an eight month old baby as well. So you know, remember, you know, I was a new mum. Uh, we're living in a brand new area. I had lived here many, many years ago. In fact, I think it was something like 20 odd years ago. <clears throat> but we came to Melbourne and we really had choice and we really carved out what our version of our most extraordinary life was. So for me, that was um, always a magazine. <clears throat> for me, I'm always going to have a magazine of some sort. So I had an online magazine called Australian Content Magazine. But I really tapped into, you know, why I was here, you know, what was my true purpose? And really for me, it had all along been to inspire and teach other women to create their own success. And then I got to play that out properly. So I became a coach. So for me, it was, you know, literally working one-on-one -on -one with other women and helping them with their businesses. <clears throat> but let's go back a few steps to, you know, the times when I didn't really have money. Now, they're the most interesting times, aren't they? Interesting, stressful, worrisome, cold white fear, all of that coming up. As I'm sure if you're watching this video, you completely can feel those feelings when you don't have enough money. You know, it can really be quite soul destroying. But the point of this is that it didn't matter about the times when I didn't have enough money 
all the times when I had more than enough money, guess what? I always came back to the middle. I always came back to having just enough because that's what my money story was. So think of it this way. I like to put it like a uh, thermometer on a, or thermostat on an air conditioner. So let's say you set your thermostat at 24 degrees. Now, it doesn't matter if the room gets quite hot, you know, the sunlight be coming in, the room will be cooled down to 24 degrees. Now, it doesn't matter if that room gets quite cold, the room temperature will always get brought up to 24 degrees. So for me, it was like that. It's like my thermostat was set, or my money thermostat was set at 24 degrees. So no matter how much money I made or how much money I didn't have, I always came back to that same thermostat. Now, in general, that's fine. You know, we always, having just enough is, is fine, but you know what, I'm more than that, and I want to be more than that, and I know that you do as well. So by watching this, I'm gathering that you're ready to make more than enough money in your world. You know, when you start to make more than enough in your world, that's when you can truly start becoming more of the version of your best self. You can become the fullest version of you. You can live your fullest life. You can live your most extraordinary life. You can live a life that starts changing other people's lives. And that's really what it's all about. You know, it's not necessarily about having more than enough money so you can go on endless holidays, you know, go shopping, buy endless handbags, blah, blah, blah. Look, that's fine too. Um, but really what it's about is by you becoming the fullest version of yourself and tapping into your inner greatness, you can then have a ripple effect to change other people's lives. Now, whether that's changing other people's lives with their money mindset, like I'm doing with you today, whether it's, you know, helping them raise their profile, whether it's helping them out of, you know, struggle situations to, to live a better life, whether it's helping children to, uh, you know, live out their full potential, you know, which is one of the things I'm really passionate about whether it's, you know, helping mums get their first job, getting back into the workforce, whatever it is for you, you need lots of money to live that out to the fullest extent and have the greatest impact that you can. So let's get that money mindset in check today. I do call it the elegance factor because I do want you to start thinking of money with a touch of elegance. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, being elegant and beautiful and living a graceful life and all of that sort of thing. I just mean if you start thinking of money as something that can give more elegance into your world in terms of how you live and how your mindset is, it, um, it can be quite empowering to think of it that way. Because let's face it, most of us who are around my age, which I won't tell you how much that is, but you can probably guess by the lines, <laughs> um, most of us who grew up in my era as children grew up uh, when there wasn't a lot of money, when interest rates were 20% on home loans, you know, when our parents really did struggle for money, you know, and I'm sure that many of you would have heard these phrases, uh, we can't afford it, sorry dad, we can't afford it, or money doesn't grow on trees, or only the rich have money, you know, it's kind of an us and them, you know, that it's greedy to have more than enough. Uh, you know, you can think of many other statements that your parents may have made around you. Now, the interesting thing is that when we're kids, uh, scientifically, between the age of cognitive development, between the age of zero and seven, that is when our belief systems are laid down. So whatever we hear most becomes a belief. We don't question it. So, you know, if your parents have said to you a lot of times that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or, you know, we can't afford it. Well, guess what's going to be laid down for the rest of your life? Even if you have more than enough money sometimes, even if you don't have enough, your belief system becomes so strong in your subconscious mind that you will subconsciously do anything you can to get back to that thermostat point, that 24 degrees. So, you know, for me, I grew up in a, a very working class family, you know, my family worked hard, you know, my mum was a single mum for many years and, you know, she worked really hard, she worked her ass off, you know, to, to look after myself and my sister. So, you know, the role model that we had, you know, 
less mum, you know, she did the very best she could do. But the role model that we had was that, you know, to earn money, you had to work hard. And even then, you didn't get a lot of money. You know, even then, we still struggled to, to have more than enough. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't the overseas holidays. There probably wasn't even holidays, you know. We um, still lived very, very basic lives. And I carried that for a very long time, you know, just having enough. You know, I even remember words coming out of my mouth like, oh, no, 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 I don't need to go shopping. I hate shopping. <laughs> I don't hate shopping. I just hate shopping if I don't have enough money. You know, the feelings that it gives me if I don't have enough money. So I used to elude myself and others that I hated shopping. So, you know, it's interesting what gets laid down as kids and then we play out as adults and we convince ourselves that, you know, we don't want more money. I've got enough. Thank you very much. Ha. So for me early this year, I decided that I wasn't available anymore for having just enough. Uh, just enough money. So I decided to take control of my money mindset no matter what it required. For me, I also decided to find the biggest, most successful coach I possibly could. Because, you know, think about this statement, you know, you are the sum of the five closest people to you. Now, uh, the people around me are fabulous, but no one's earning you know, the million dollars. So I went for someone who already was. In fact, I found a coach over in the States who is, uh, who's earning multiple seven figures. Now she's living on purpose. You know, she's living her best, fullest version of her life. She's getting to travel the world six months of the year, uh, you know, live out her version of her extraordinary life. So joined up um, with coaching with her. Now I have, to date, learned a lot about my money story. I've learned a lot about my money mindset, but this year was even more powerful. And you know what? It actually brought it from, I need to do everything in the world to be able to master my money mindset to just a few key things. So that's what I wanna share with you this week. Uh, just before I do, just talking about the, the story of me prior and the story of me now, just to give you an example of, of you know how this changed me. Um, to date, I have had successful businesses and those businesses have actually turned over multiple six figures. Great. Awesome. You know, in fact, um, my, I had a magazine that was turning over, over $500,000 a year in revenue before I sold it. Like, yay for me, tops, tops, tops. Um, the issue was that I was working my absolute bottom off, you know, Think of that, you know, conditioning that I grew up as a kid. Um, and there wasn't a lot of profit, you know, and I, I could say, oh, magazines, they don't give a lot of profit. But when you haven't mastered your money mindset and your desires and tapped right into your worth, these are all things I'm going to talk about. Um, again, you have just enough. So interesting. So uh, this year, however, in particular, and you know, a couple of years ago when I first moved to Melbourne, I really decided that I wasn't available for that anymore. I was available to earn a lot of money, but I wanted the profit margins to be higher. And look, honestly, it's taken, you know, time after time, business after business to get there. My business to date actually brings in, uh, it doesn't matter about the actual figures, but it's multiple six figures, but um, in terms of profit, it actually brings in about 70% profit give or take. Mm -hmm. Now that's what I'm talking about people. That's what I'm talking about of moving from just enough to having more than enough. Now I will also say I'm not one of these people who go, Oh, look at me. I'm so perfect. Uh, if you've read my blog, that's why I need that every day <laughs> to look at. Totally not perfect. Totally not perfect. Um, and I really want to show you that it's not that hard to do this for yourself right? You know, once you really tap into to what it is you desire. So today's challenge, all I want you to do today is I want you to get real. I want you to get real with the badness of your current money situation. All right. Now, if you're here and you don't have a bad money situation, I'm not really sure why you're here because we've all got stuff going on. So get real with the badness of it. So step number one, I want you to go and have a look at your bank account. See what's in there. 
I want you to even write the figure down. And in fact, if you can, have a piece of paper or a journal and write down how that bank account figure makes you feel. You know, does it conjure up any feelings of stress, panic, not enough, self-worth, all of that. Don't worry, I get it. I totally get it. Write it down. So get in the badness of it. If you can, as well as a, a second step, you know, go and have a look at your budgets. Now, I don't really like the word budget. I don't like to restrict you, but I want you to get real. How much money have you got going out and how much money have you got coming in? You know, the, the traditional uh, definition of wealth is to basically have more coming in than you've got going out. You know, that's kind of it. But I'll, I'll talk about wealth as we go because I believe it's far more than that. But go and have a look at your accounts and your budget. You know, for personal and for business, what have you got coming in? What have you got going out? And, you know, where does this discrepancy lie? Secondary, I've got a few questions that I would love for you to spend tonight answering. Now, I'm going to talk about them now, uh, but I will send them on an email to you next because they're really important that you spend some time thinking about this. And that is getting thrilled with your money story. Now, our money story is really what defines our beliefs about money. So we need to spend today getting clear on our money story so that we can start moving towards fixing it. Um, in terms of transformation, there's three stages. Number one is self-awareness. So before we even get to number two and three, let's get self-aware. So the questions are, and if you've got a pen and paper, write these down or wait for the next email. Number one, what was your mother's relationship with money? You know, what were her thoughts, her perceptions, her feelings, her experiences around money? Number two, you guessed it, what were your father's? You know, what were his thoughts, feelings, perceptions, you know, actions around money? You know, uh, to go into my story very briefly, in case mum and dad are watching, all love to you. You know, I was talking about mum before. You know, mum worked hard. You know, that was her story. She had to work hard to just make ends meet. Um, my father, as in my, my natural father, there's a couple, gets, gets confusing. Um, but you know, he had a problem with gambling whilst, um, you know, my sister and I were, were babies. So. You know, I can see residue of that coming up in my world. Um, so, you know, these are things that affect us. So get rid of that story. Uh, next, I want you to see what your grandparents' story was. You know, this is where it goes, people. It goes far back. It's often not our stuff that we're carrying around. We are just the byproduct of years of family belief systems and conditioning and conditioning of society. So take a look at what your parent, grandparents' story was. You know, again, if you're anything like me growing up and uh, our grandparents would have gone through wars and depression, so clearly there's some shit going on. Money story. Um, the last question is then, so what is your money story? You know, and Elaborate as much as you can. Get real with this. What is your money story? Have a think about, you know, it might even help if you thought about money, if it were a relationship. You know, if you were in a relationship to money, how would it treat you? You know, how does that relationship with money make you feel? You know, interesting one. So go deep, people. This is where it is. You know, I said this was super simple, but very powerful. So spend tonight getting out your journal. Question one, well, action number one, go and get real about the badness of your current money situation. So go and have a look at your bank account, go and have a look at what comes in, what goes out, uh, because we'll work on this over the next couple of days and work out, you know, what it is that you really want. So that's fine. Do that action. Second one is to answer these questions. What was your mother's relationship with money? Your father's relationship with money? your grandparents, and then what's your money story? I would love for you to share with me. I know that, you know, money often brings up guilt and feelings of shame. So I understand if you don't want to talk about it on social media, but know that I will be on our Facebook page over the next 24 hours to support you. 
Uh, so I'll send the link in this email. I'll also be uh, on email, janine at janinehoward.com. That's G-E-N-I-N-E at janinehoward.com. Send me an email, you know, I'm here to support and, you know, go through this. Know too that this will probably bring up some really big feelings over the next five days. So go easy with yourself. Lots of deep breathing. If you're into meditating, take some time out, you know, be really kind and gentle. So that's it for today's challenge. Go and get real with your money story. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Use the hashtag, hashtag the elegance factor. If you're on Instagram or Facebook uh, and tell us about how you're going with your money story. See you tomorrow.